Happy 2026, everyone. I'm keeping an eye on a storm system which will likely pick up enough instability and moisture from the Gulf to produce some severe weather later on this week. We're timing that out for Thursday for the South Central states and then Friday for the deep south and portions of the southeast. And as it moves east on Saturday, it should lose some steam. We're going to talk about who's likely to see the best threat for severe weather and what we can be looking forward to and who will be impacted in this video. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you here and take a look at the satellite image from this Monday afternoon and evening. And the culprit is this large trough off the West Coast sending moisture in the northern and central California, a strong area of uh instability coming in from the Pacific, a strong jet stream that is eventually going to pivot eastward. We do have high pressure controlling the Gulf and Mexico, and we've got a frontal boundary, which is producing some heavier rains over the northern part of Hispaniola and the resorts of Puerto Rico. So we are getting wet in the northern Caribbean and we'll stay wet for a few more days, it looks like. Uh, but this area of high pressure shifts east and parks itself over South Florida and the Bahamas, early on in the weekend. At the same time, this system also moves eastward and the timing of it still a bit uh, uncertain. And the details are gonna be having to be ironed out here over the coming days. Uh, but right now we are likely to see Friday uh, to be our most active day over portions of the deep south. Here's a look at what we're tracking. This is the upper low, it drops south of California on Wednesday and then enters the United States Wednesday afternoon and starts to pick up moisture on Thursday. We'll see some rain breaking out later Wednesday evening, but Thursday is the day when we're likely to start to see the threat for severe weather picking up somewhere in Texas, Oklahoma, maybe Arkansas and Northwest Louisiana. Uh, but you'll see uh, more intensity in the winds aloft by the time we get to Friday morning. High pressure controls Florida, so you're not going to get in on it in Florida until we get to the weekend. But as the system moves east, the trough deepens. Uh, we are likely going to see the setup for at least some severe weather and at least a slight risk, maybe even an enhanced risk, depending on how all of this plays out. By the time we get to the weekend and this trough swings east, there will be quite a bit of wind to deal with from the Great Lakes to the eastern United States. There could be substantial rain with it. Uh, but the story will then turn to more wintry weather uh, returning in the form of dry, cooler weather uh, by the time we get to the final half of this upcoming weekend. And that will be talked about more in coming videos. Here's the GFS model. It's a little different than the European. One storm system tracking across the northeastern United States. Here's our next storm entering the southwest. There'll be snow in the mountains of New Mexico and Arizona Wednesday night and Thursday. And then as the storm picks up some moisture from the Gulf, rain breaks out Wednesday night and Thursday. The first rain in over 40 days for some of you in Oklahoma, North Texas, and Kansas. That is a substantial uh, keystone here in this forecast. We haven't had rain since November, and it will finally rain in some parts of the Sooner State here in North Texas as well. Uh, there could be some severe weather at this point. It's not a great setup, but the storm is intensifying. There's cold air behind it, so the Rockies will get some snow. As we get later into Thursday, though, that storm ejects northeastward into the Great Lakes. At this point, winds pick up, the air turns warmer, uh, but we are unlikely going to be dealing with severe weather too far north of the Ohio River. It'll more likely just be some rainy, windy conditions. At the same time, there is a trailing piece of energy that'll bring enough cold air down where this snow could find its way onto the high plains by the time we get to Thursday night and Friday. And the areas dealing with rain for the first time in over 40 days in Oklahoma could end up with a little bit of wet snow by Friday morning. That's still to be ironed out at this point. It's marginally cold enough for snow, but even the Texas Panhandle could see a little bit of snow, which would be a good deal uh, for those of you worried about uh, winter kill on your agricultural um, crops here. Now, across the deep south, Friday morning could have a little severe weather. Later Friday, a better chance. And the area that I think we need to be watching more carefully will be across Dixie here, across uh, southern Mississippi and Alabama, and perhaps Louisiana as well. The GFS model a little bit quicker than the European. The European actually gives us maybe a little bit of a better shot at severe weather because of its slower timing. As the system continues on to the east here on Saturday, it does weaken some. It moves offshore. Cold air returns, so we'll see snow in the Great Lakes and northeast Although rain in the big cities, maybe some rain ending as snow in the mountains by sat, uh, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. Uh, but the closer this moves to the eastern seaboard, the weaker the storm will end up. And by the time we get down into southern and central Florida, the storm basically is a dry front by the time we get into early on Sunday. Here's a look at what the GFS shows our radar will look like. 
And we're not going to talk much about the first storm. It's not a real big deal. But as we roll on into Thursday, you'll see the rain breaks out here. It could be heavy at times Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon over eastern Oklahoma, eastern Kansas, and much of Missouri. And then most of that heavy rain lifts very quickly up through the Great Lakes Thursday night. That's wave number one. Here's wave number two. That is going to pick up more moisture out of the Gulf. Clouds are going to be around for much of the day. Where the sun pops out is where our threat for severe weather, of course, will be at its best. That could be later in the day on Friday. It could be Friday evening. That's still to be determined a bit. And then this system will advance quickly eastward. And Saturday, uh, for those of, us, those of us that really could use a lot of rain in the mid-Atlantic region and the southeast, it doesn't look like we're going to see a whole lot of it, unfortunately. Uh, so for now, looking at Thursday, the Storm Prediction Center has not yet highlighted an area that they're confident will have severe weather. That could change, but for now, uh, there is not yet a risk of severe weather. Now, as we roll into Friday, there is a risk. It's a slight risk of 15% which stretches across the lower Ohio Valley down through much of the Mississippi River Valley, all the way down to about Natchez and uh, down to uh, Concordia and Catahoula Parish in Louisiana. That includes uh, Jackson, Mississippi, Monroe, Louisiana, Memphis, northern Mississippi, eastern Arkansas, uh, the boot heel of Missouri, western Tennessee, almost all the way to Nashville, getting close there. Uh, all of western Kentucky, far southwest Indiana, and southern Illinois. This could certainly change. This is the forecast that updates once a day early on while many of you are sleeping. It'll update again overnight tonight. It'll be a day four forecast for Friday. Uh, looking ahead to Saturday, we do not yet have an area highlighted for severe weather, but we'll keep an eye on the southeast for that. Now, taking a look at some experimental ensembles, you will see that the analogs show there will at least be uh, somewhat of a chance for some possible severe weather, depending on how this all comes out to play. But this is we're taking over 50 possibilities, averaging them together and finding an area where severe weather has happened in the past with a similar setup. And that would be North Texas, Oklahoma, eventually into western Arkansas. And uh, for now, primarily severe wind, but hail certainly was something we got to watch around the Red River. Uh, tornadoes, not really a great chance, but overnight, something uh, that this uh, particular forecast is showing. Uh, as we get towards uh, western portions of Arkansas. But hail uh, is something that uh, the models are showing, um, at least this ensemble is showing. So we'll have to see if the Storm Prediction Center believes that this ensemble forecast will be correct. Now, as we roll on into Friday, that's the day I think more of us are going to be watching in the Mississippi River Valley, all the way down to the Florida parishes of Louisiana, all the way into western Alabama, and all the way up into southern Illinois. The area that got hit by a tornado about a week ago, we'll have to watch this, but I think the majority stays to your south. Uh, and in particular, I think we've got to be more concerned with uh, the Dixie Alley area of Mississippi and Alabama and possibly Tennessee and even Louisiana. So this area needs to be watched later in the afternoon, Friday and into Friday evening. As we roll into Saturday, the threat for severe weather is a lot more limited. And for now, the analogs show it pretty much falling apart. Uh, I will say this, this is a six-day forecast. We'll still have to keep an eye on it, I think, for South Georgia, maybe northern Florida. And there will be an area we've got to watch for particularly strong wind as the front rolls through. There may be very little lightning or very little rain at this point, but there could be strong winds along the front stretching along the I-95 corridor. Just keep an eye on that. Uh, but I don't think next Saturday is going to be a repeat of this past Saturday in South Georgia where we had that massive hail. So just something to keep an eye on. Uh, taking a look at some of our models here, um, we're looking at uh, storm fuel. We're looking at wind fields here. The hodograph is the wind field. And you'll see the storm fuel starts getting pretty nasty here later in the afternoon Friday. This is 3 central time. Uh, looking at Tangipahoa Parish, uh, Franklin Parish, uh, St. Tammany, uh, all the way up into uh, southwest Mississippi. We start getting some storm fuel in here. If you pull up a sounding, you're going to see that there is not a lot of wind shear, but the winds do increase with height. So we do need to be watching for some tornado potential, although this particular model doesn't show that. If you take a look at the European model, though, it does look a little bit more robust because it is slower with that second piece. And in fact, it highlights the Houston area on Friday as potentially an area to watch for some severe weather, albeit it's somewhat marginal. But you're going to see here on this uh, forecast model sounding, there is some turning with the winds with height. But as we roll this into the afternoon, you're going to see Louisiana and Mississippi. Um, let me back that up just a moment here. Um, 
this is a little bit slower. So the closer to the Gulf you get, the little bit better chance we have of tornadoes. Uh, but there certainly could be some wind damage, depending on how all of this plays out here. So those are two different options at this point. They may both be incorrect, but at least gives us some tools to start with here. But Friday afternoon, we're watching Louisiana. We may be watching East Texas. We're definitely watching Mississippi and Alabama towards the evening hours. And then as we roll into Saturday, again, we're going to have to watch South Florida, Northern Florida here, or South Georgia, Northern Florida. Uh, and then this is going to fall apart by the time it makes it to the East Coast. And nothing to worry about really in Central or South Florida after that. We do need rain. Take a look at this map from Crop Profit. The last 30 days have been way below normal across almost much of the central and eastern United States when you get south of the Great Lakes. Only a small handful of counties have had above average rainfall. In South Texas, that would be Willacy and Refugio counties have gotten above average rain. And in Florida, Orlando area has gotten just above average rain. The Bay area has gotten just above average rain. Just to the north of the Bay, though, very dry. And then just above average is Wakulla County at 102%. There could be some excessive rain from this storm uh, first with the first wave on Thursday from Oklahoma up into Indiana. And by excessive, we're talking probably a couple of inches. And then by the time we get to Friday, the rest of the Ohio and Tennessee valleys come into play, maybe at night for western parts of North Carolina and upstate South Carolina. But at this point, I don't think major flooding is something we got to be super concerned with. The rain will be more beneficial over time than it will be a problem. But it will be pretty wet here with rain totals overall going to be over an inch over parts of the Missouri Valley into the Mississippi Valley and uh, one to two inches of rain being predicted right now from the Weather Prediction Center, uh, maybe even more over parts of the Great Lakes. Unfortunately, where we do need a lot of rain over the eastern Carolinas, once you get east of I-85, it really does begin to tail off. Maybe the Outer Banks get a little bit more with some of that moisture surging out ahead of our front. Uh, the Gulf, Central Gulf Coast, we could see an inch, maybe an inch and a half locally with some of these storms. Uh, the Florida Peninsula will miss out on the majority of this rain. Let's take a look at our temperature anomalies. This week, winter is pretty much non-existent, at least major winter chill. It's not going to be with us, but our next storm system is going to bring us some colder air coming in. It's not going to be truly Arctic air. It will be colder for a few days. Uh, mainly Sunday and Monday, and perhaps another shot of cold later next week. But we really don't see a major outbreak of cold coming. This is not going to be earth-shattering cold by any stretch. But next week certainly will be colder for the most part across parts of the Deep South. We could be challenging some record high temperatures, but cloud cover will be something to keep an eye on here. 70s and 80s for most of us in the South. We do have a shot at getting close to 90 degrees, though, on Thursday across deep south Texas. So uh, get ready to run the air conditioning again from San Antonio on southward. But the cold is coming. And Friday morning, we drop down into the 30s and possibly even the 20s across the panhandles. And we struggle to warm up on Friday. In fact, uh, Texas could have temperatures from the 20s in the northwest to the mid 80s in deep south Texas. And where it's raining, those temperatures get held down as well in the southeast. A uh, little cool today, but starting to warm back here for tomorrow, at least to near and above average levels. Florida will be very nice temperature wise. The Gulf states will be fairly mild. And uh, we are actually going to keep that warm up going for the second half of this week. Thursday will be quite warm over parts of the deep south. We'll be well into the 70s, maybe pushing 80 in a few locations. But our warmest days should be Friday into Saturday for Florida and much of the southeast. Look at Friday. Uh, we'll be in the 70s around uh, parts of downstate Missouri and well into the 60s into parts of Ohio and Virginia, 70s around Raleigh, Durham, 80s across Florida, where we had that freeze just a week ago. And take a look at Saturday. We could be reaching the 70s all the way up to near the mouth of the Potomac River, 80s across much of Florida. And then you'll see that colder air does make its way in later this weekend. And if you're heading to church Sunday morning, you'll need the coats again as temperatures will drop into the 30s and 40s over much of the Mid-South. Florida will not yet get that chill for Sunday, but it will turn colder. And Monday, we return to seasonably cool weather for much of the Sunshine State. Next week will be quite a bit colder. You're probably asking yourself, are we ever going to see snow again? Well, the pattern does not show any of that, at least over the next week. Uh, next week, it gets colder, but there really is not a snow signal over the majority of next week. Here's a probability map, and it's not showing much, 10% or less across much of the south. If you're in the mountains, 
from North Carolina up to West Virginia, you could see some passing snow. Obviously, you got to get up into the Laurel Highlands and the Alleghenies before we really have to talk about any snow. Uh, but at this point, the trend is not our friend. If you're in the Tennessee Valley, if you're in Arkansas, I am not going to predict a snow signal off of an ensemble average of 10%. It just doesn't move the needle for me. So I'll keep you posted if that changes. Right now, the next few weeks are not looking favorable for any major cold. Uh, if we do get colder, the moisture is going to have to work in, in the favor of that. And right now, I just don't see that happening. Uh, but again, I can't predict something like that super with super accuracy 15 or more days away, really more than six days away. So we're not going to forecast it right now. But if that changes, I will, of course, keep you posted. Thank you for joining me here on this Monday. And um, it is a new year and many of us have res resolutions. My resolution is to shorten my videos up to kind of clean up the diet and uh, to just renew myself. And I do that in my Christian faith uh, by renewing my faith and turning to God it allows me to work on removing those old habits and to keep my eyes focused on God and not on myself because God is our creator. And he's done that through Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul tells us second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when you have the opportunity to accept Christ, it will change your life. It will change where you spend your eternity. It did for me 14 years ago when I made that decision. Um, and I've seen it happen in, in many of my friends and, and other people's lives. Uh, you have that opportunity to accept Christ as your savior and it will change your life. It's not going to make you perfect. No one can be perfect. Only Jesus can be perfect. What it will do is change where you spend your eternity. And I'm here to bring the encouragement to you that that is still possible if you have not made that choice. And if you have made that choice, that is wonderful. You will still be discouraged. We all get discouraged, but just know that the good times are coming. I appreciate you joining me here on this Monday, and I will see you again on my next video. Have a blessed evening.